Hey guys, all right, today I have a new reformer workout for you. This one's gonna be quite different, lots of fun. The only props you need for this one are your reformer box, okay, and then a pair of light dumbbells. And those are gonna be waiting for you at the rear of the machine. So I've got a pair of three pounders waiting for me at the back. You won't need it till we get towards the end of the class uh, for a few sequences at the rear of the machine. Okay, so have that ready. My reformer box, I have it up. So my foot bar, my foot bar is the infinity foot bar for uh, my balanced body reformer. I can put it all the way down so the box is nice and flat, but for most reformers, your foot bar is not going to go all the way down um, or out of the way. So if you wanna place that, get that foot bar in the most forward position, and you're gonna have that box propped up on that front, uh, on the front platform and the front on the foot bar. Okay, so you've got it nice and sturdy. My box is not going anywhere, but it's got a little bit of a tilt to it. We're gonna be doing a whole plank sequence for the beginning of class on the box in this position. So it's gonna be great. Just make sure it's nice and sturdy and that it's not gonna go anywhere. So give it a little shake side to side. I've got my reformer set on one blue spring and it's gonna stay that way throughout all of class. So. If you're on a balanced body reformer, one blue makes a lot of sense to you. If you're on a different brand of reformer, it may be a different color. It may just be one spring, but it's gonna stay that way the whole class, so no confusion with the springs, okay? Uh, my headrest is down, my straps are ready to go. We're gonna hit the full body today. Now, a couple things I, I don't say enough. I layer a lot, and when I say layer, I usually start with a sequence, and I start pretty simple and then we start to slowly amp up that exercise or that sequence. So things start to get more and more difficult as we go in a certain position. If a layer doesn't work for you, this is your workout. You don't have to take that layer. Stay at the layer before where you felt comfortable. If you feel like you wanna challenge yourself, if you're gonna try this workout several times and you wanna try it add on a little bit more. The reason I layer is I give people a place to go, all right? So if you're a beginner level, you're gonna wanna stay at the first one or two layers of an exercise. If you're more advanced and you've been doing reformer for a long time, you're very familiar with Pilates, you may wanna go all the way and really push it, okay? So please, it's your workout, you do what you need to do. If you ever have questions for me, you leave them below the video, okay? And I will answer you, you can always find me on social media as well. Um, what else? I think that's it. As always, you leave comments, like the video, subscribe. I post new videos all the time, but that's enough chit chat, right? Let's get started, okay? So we're gonna start on our carriage with that box right away. Okay, so I'm gonna have my forearms down on the box and I'm gonna be in a four point position. So that meaning my elbows underneath my shoulders, my knees are underneath my hips and that belly button is pulled up and in. I'm gonna roll those shoulders down and back. My eyes are on the box. Okay, and my toes are gonna turn under. So I've got some support from my feet. Okay, now from here, we're gonna hover the knees off the carriage. So I want you to take a nice exhale to prepare. Inhale, draw both knees off the carriage one inch and just hold. Don't let that carriage go anywhere. We're not extending our legs. We're just holding and breathing. I'm drawing my elbows into my waistline, okay? Notice they're not moving, right? But that's an internal cue, okay? So that's gonna light up your right and left waistline. So just hold it right there and breathe. We're here for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. Set those knees down nice and soft. We're gonna do that one more time, okay? So those internal cues are important here because we're not really moving our body, okay? We're just hovering and holding. On your inhale, hover those knees one inch off the carriage, hold. Draw those elbows in towards your waistline. Shoulder blades are wrapping the ribs, giving them a nice hug. My ribs are closed, my belly button is pulled up and in. I'm here for eight, seven, six, five. Try to lighten up those toes. Last three, two, and set those knees down nice and soft. Now, from this position, we're gonna take it out to a full plank. So on your next hover, we're gonna be extending those legs. So again, on that inhale, you're gonna hover those knees one inch, hold. 
Draw those shoulder blades down the back body. Inhale, lengthen out both legs. You're now in that full plank. Okay, so staying right here. You've got that one blue spring, so it might feel a little bit heavier than usual, but stay right here. We're going to do a little shoulder hinge. So on your inhale, we're going to slide our shoulders back away from our elbows and then draw it back in. Good. Inhale, lengthen. Good. Keeping that core engaged. Just rocking or rolling through those shoulders. So nothing else is changing with my body. Okay? We're just moving that plank by taking that little movement through the shoulder. Shoulders come back away from the elbows. Now we're going to start to add on here. This is a layer. Okay? We're going to uh, lengthen away from those elbows. Good. Come all the way back into shoulders over elbows. And now I'm going to pull my right knee towards my left elbow. Maybe I'll tap the box and then send it back out. Let's go for that shoulder hinge. Good. Exhale. Bring it back. Shoulders over elbows. Now my left knee is going to come in towards my right elbow. Good. And bring it all the way back. Good. So I'm trying to get to tapping the box with my kneecap. Okay. If you can reach it, if you can get there without changing the structure of your plank, go for it. Okay. You're going to get that little extra work through those transverse abdominal muscles Whew. and tap. So it's opposite knee to opposite elbow, shoulder hinge in between. We're alternating that knee curl or that knee pull. I should say we're not rounding the spine. My spine is staying nice and flat. Whew. All right. We got two more after this one right here. Let's take that shoulder hinge. Good. Exhale. Bring it back. Right knee to left elbow. Good. Put it back. Inhale. Lengthen out. Exhale. Bring it back. Left knee to right elbow. Woo. Replace that foot and drag that carriage all the way in. Woo. Take a little quick child's pose if you need to. Open up that back body. Good. Now from here, we're going to move on to a side plank. My left forearm is going to come down onto that box. I promise you we're not planking all of class. Okay, but we're starting with a nice longer sequence here. Now, my knees are going to stay bent. Okay, but what I want you to find right away is that my right knee is stacked on top of my left. I've got a nice long left waistline facing the box. My elbow is under my shoulder. My chest is open. Okay, and that right arm is going to come up and overhead. Now, from here, we're going to slide through that shoulder again. So on my inhale, I'm going to take that shoulder away from the elbow, and I'm going to look and reach overhead with that right arm. Good. Exhale, bring it back. So a little shoulder hinge, reaching, lengthening out of that left waistline, lengthening out of my right with that reach. And then I bring it back. You're going to feel quite a shake here. Lengthen and reach. My left shin is heavy on the carriage. Okay. I'm keeping lots of length on both sides of the waist. Let's go for two more right here. Lengthen and reach. And just relieving some tension in the neck as I turn my head. Last one. Good. And bring it back. Now, right here, my right foot is going to come to the shoulder block and my left foot is going to come to a shoulder block. So I've got that staggered position, right foot in front of left. Now my right arm, it's going to sweep under the body. I'm going to look at those fingers and then bring it back. Yes. Sweep it under Woo, and bring it back. Last two. Just four times right here because we've got one more layer. Okay. Again, these are the layers I'm talking about. On your next one, hold it right here. We're going to take a little crunch right through that left waistline, and we're going to move the carriage in and pike through the right waist and extend. Lift, lifting up out of that left shoulder. Try to pull that carriage in two inches. Good. You've got four. Whew. Last three. Good. You've got two. Last one. And bring it all the way in. Whoo, boy. All right. Coming through center, we're going to do some tricep work on the box. So my knees are down under my hips again. My hands are going to come down on the box, but you're going to have your palms flat this time. 
So my fingertips are right at the front edge of the box. My elbows are also on the box. If you want your elbows a little bit off, that's fine, but I don't want your fingertips hanging off. Okay, so keep your fingertips right to the edge. Spread those fingers out nice and wide so you can find that little suction cup right at the center of the palm. Okay, and from here, we're gonna open up the front of the hips. Notice my toes are turned under against those shoulder blocks. That's fine, you can have them flat right between the shoulder blocks, wherever you feel comfortable. Okay, now my front of my body is nice and open. My shoulders are down and back, my ribs are closed. From here, I'm gonna find those palms and I'm gonna press up, opening up that inside elbow. Exhale as I fold the elbows back down under the shoulder. Okay, inhale, press it up. Exhale, bring it down. Now notice as you press up, right, the bicep rolls inward. Okay, and we light up that tricep. As we bend the elbows, those, tr those biceps roll or roll forward. Okay, they look more forward towards the fingertips. Inhale, press it up. Exhale, bend the elbows down. Let's go for four. Just this tricep press to start. We're gonna add on, but keep that body nice and strong. Last three. Good, last two. And again, if at any point you need to reset or take a minute, do that. Don't work through poor form, okay? On your next one, you're gonna press up and hold. Okay, now we're gonna press away from the box, opening up the front body a little bit more. I'm gonna bend my elbows so they touch the box and I'm gonna pull my shoulders back over my elbows. I'm gonna press up. I'm gonna send my body away from the box. Hold that. Bend the elbows so they touch the box again and pull yourself in so your shoulders are over your elbows. Okay, the triceps light up quite a bit here. Push yourself away from the box. Elbows tap the box and then we pull our shoulders back over our elbows. Good, lengthening through the collarbone. I'm keeping lots of length. Good, tapping the box with my elbows, pulling it back in. Let's go for three more just like that. Lift, extend. Bend the elbows, pull it in. Last two. Press away. Good, opening that front body a little bit more, but not dumping through the waistline or that pelvis. Last one. Press away. Bend the elbows. Bring it back. Now, just the way we started, just those presses. Up and down. Opening the elbows and bending. So it's a bend and extend right here. Everything else stays nice and strong. My shoulder blades are wrapping my ribs still. Last four. Good, you've got three. Ooh, last two. And last one. And bring yourself all the way in. Okay, I promise, side plank on the other side, but last plank, well, there's one more plank towards the end, but last plank for this beginning sequence. So right forearm is gonna come to the box. Okay, knees are gonna stack. Right shin is heavy, left knee is stacked right on top so they're even, okay? You've got my, your right shoulder over your right elbow. Left arm is gonna come up towards the ceiling. Now right from here, I'm gonna move away from my elbow. So I'm gonna send my body away a few inches and I'm gonna look up and over towards the foot bar. Left arm is in front of my ear. And then I'm gonna pull it back to start. Good. Inhale, lengthen away. Find that reach. I'm not twisting my torso. I'm just giving my head a little look towards that foot bar. Good. Inhale, up and over. Exhale, bring it back. Whoo. Finding lots of length out of that right waistline. Good. Let's go for four. Good, last three. Whoo, that one shoulder, right? They get it, it's, it's a lot. We can't be here forever. Last two. Good, and last one. Coming all the way back. Now, right here, we're gonna take that left foot to the shoulder block in front, right foot to the shoulder block behind. Okay, and we're gonna hold that staggered position. From here, that left arm is gonna sweep under the waist, look at those fingers, and then bring it all the way back up. Three more times, just like that. Sweep and bring it back. Hold on to it, guys, hold on to it. Last two. Good, remember just four here. And now we've got that little curl through the bottom waistline right here. We're gonna 
pull the carriage in just two, maybe three inches. Good. Finding that tight curl in that right waistline. You've got six. Whoo. Five. Last four. Good. You've got three. Whoo. Last two. Oh, boy. And last one. And bring those legs all the way in. Oh, boy. All right. So roll out those shoulders. Give them a little relief. We're coming into a rear-facing donkey kick. So turning around, facing the back. I'm going to scooch all the way over to the right side of my machine. My long loop is going to come around my right thigh. Okay, so you want to take a minute and get that up above the knee, long loop above the knee. Once you've got it there, you're going to find your very best four-point kneel. Okay, I've got my right kneecap and my right palm really close to the edge of the reformer. My wrists are under my shoulders. My knees are under my hips. Now, this is one exercise where you're going to start to want to lean into the left side. I want you to try to stay center. Okay, keep that left knee directly aligned under the hip because a lot of times I see it right in the midline. We want to keep it under the hip. Okay, now right from here, that's the challenge to keep that pelvis stable. My right leg is going to work. So roll those shoulders down and back, lift up out of that shoulder girdle. Right foot is flexed. And on your inhale, okay, you're going to sweep that right heel up and back for the ceiling and bring it back under the body. Good. Inhale up and back. Exhale, bring it under the body. Now my rope or my strap is rubbing up against my right forearm. Try to ignore it. I know it's annoying and irritating. Okay, but I want you to try to stay level. A lot of times I'll see people put their hand up here, but all that did, now we just shifted the body. Your weight is dumping into your left leg now, and I don't want you to do that. Okay, so keep everything nice and stable. Shoulders are squared to the carriage. Pelvis is level. My right hip doesn't get to hike up. Okay, it stays level with my left hip. Core is engaged. Good, and that heel is reaching and driving for the ceiling. Keeping the leg bent. We've got four. Whew. Last three. Good. You've got two. All right. On your next one, we're going to take that leg now and we're going to lift it out to the side for a hydrant and bring it back. Good. Lift it out to the side and bring it back. Good. Little hydrants. Again, keeping the pelvis quiet and stable. Good. Trying not to dump the weight. If you feel like you're shifting your weight into your left shin too much, try to regulate that. Reset. Bring it back to center. My right palm is heavy. Right palm is super heavy. Last four. Good. We've got three. And we're going to come back to this hydrant, but we're going to take a minute to do something else. Last two. Now, on your next one, you're going to take that right knee and we're going to lift it and we're going to circle it around and down back under the hip. It's a hydrant to a knee circle. So I'm swiveling my femur bone in my right hip, okay, trying to keep the pelvis stable. Whoo, these heat up really fast. Let's go for three. Keep those hips quiet. Last two. I don't care how high you go. You're looking for mobility. Last one. Back to that hydrant. You're going to lift, lateral lift. Now we're going to extend the leg, bend it back, and bring it under the hip. Hydrant, lift. Extend through the heel, bend the knee, and bring it back under the hip. Good. Lift. You're extending that leg in external rotation. Getting that engagement through the glute. Bending the knee back under the body. Last two like that. Woo. And last one. Okay, now, on you're going to do one more just like that, but we're going to hold it out there. So the hydrant's going to lift. We're going to extend the leg, and now we're going to bend and extend, but we're not dropping the knee anymore. It's staying lifted. Woo, you can feel that right and left waistline quite a bit. Good. Find your weight. Bring it through center. You've got four. Whew. Last three. Good. You've got two. And last one. And bend that knee and bring it all the way down. Whew. Okay. Come on up, but don't take off your strap. 
You're going to step off to the right side of your machine. Okay, now that strap, you're going to slide it down around your calf. Okay, so now it's between my knee and my ankle. All right, I'm going to find a place where I've still got the carriage out away from the bumper. So I've still got tension on it. Okay, my right foot's going to stay where it's at. Okay, left hands are going to come to, or, sorry, both hands are going to come to your hip. Left leg is going to step. So we're going to step back into a split squat. And then we're going to lift up into a mini arabesque. So the right leg straightens out. We're going to bend back down into that split squat. And then we're going to lift into that mini arabesque. Now, the challenge here is to find stability with the tension of the carriage pulling on your right leg. Okay, I want you to ground that right foot nice and heavy into the floor. My right knee stays behind my toes and it tracks with big toe, second toe. My left hip is equal with my right hip as I work through this entire sequence. They stay together. They work together. They stay together. Now, that mini arabesque, I say mini arabesque because I want you to keep your back, your low back nice and flat. Okay, we're not going to lift. Look, and it has shortened my low back. No. Okay, we're bending, dripping that back knee straight for the floor, and then we're lifting, extending the right leg, Little kick back with the left, engaging that left glute. Whoo. Good, you guys. Hang on to this right here. We got four. And we got two holds. Okay, again, I'm talking about layers. So if you are good here and this is where you feel comfortable, you can stay here. But we've got two holds, which is going to really challenge those muscles with a little more time under tension. All right, you guys. On your next one, you're going to hold that little split squat. Make sure that knee is tracking with big toe, second toe. That keeps those inner thighs close to the midline. The core is engaged, belly button up and in. Let's take a little pulse of that squat. My right heel is heavier than my right toes. So I want you to feel the pulse come from the back line of that right leg, right where the glute and hamstring meet, that little glam line. Right there. Good. Hold it here for six. Woo, last five. We're going to find that arabesque one more time. Last three. Good. You've got two. Think of those inner thighs like tweezers right now. Woo. On your next one, you're going to lift up to that arabesque, and we're going to hold it. Nice, long diagonal line down the back body, and we're just going to pulse that left leg up. My right knee is soft. I want you to make sure that you're not twisting open onto that left side. Both hip bones are level. Core is tight. We're just pulsing that leg up and down. My right leg is stabilizing. So I feel my right glute quite a bit. Good, you guys, right here. You got six, five, four, three, last two, and bring it all the way down. Okay, let's take off that strap, hang it back up. We're going to do a bridge on that box. Okay, so. I don't bridge as much as I should. It's probably one of my least favorite exercises. So I thought we'd do a nice longer sequence here. Okay, so you've got your feet on the box, okay? We're gonna go for, we're gonna start with a normal stance right off the hips. Okay, so my feet, my knees about four to six inches apart. My hands, you can either have them long and low by your sides on the carriage for more stability, or if you want a little extra challenge, Bring those arms up towards the ceiling today, okay? Now, right from here, we're challenging the flexibility through the ankle too, trying to keep those feet flat. So do the best you can right there. On your inhale, we're gonna lift the hips off the carriage and open up the front body. I want you to keep the carriage home with your hamstrings. Okay, so we're not letting the carriage slide out like this. Okay, we're keeping it in, lifting the hips in that position. Mine don't open all the way up right there. There's not enough room. And then back down. Okay, so don't look for that full opening yet. Lift, holding with the hamstrings. So we're really challenging the strength of the hamstrings right here. Good. Inhale, lift, opening up the front body. Exhale, bringing the tailbone back down. So it's a hinge. We're looking for a hinge. Okay, we're not rounding the spine. It's a lift and lower from that tailbone. Good, you guys. Let's go for four more of that full range of motion. Again, my arms up is a little less support. 
Okay, so if you want to have more support, you just bring your arms down by your side. Same thing. Okay, still keeping the carriage home with the strength of the hamstrings. Last two. Good. On your next one, you're going to hold it up there. Okay, and now we're just going to go in and out. So we're going to lengthen, opening up the back of the knee. Now my toes leave the box. Okay, and then we're going to come all the way back in, connecting the foot to the box again, keeping the hips lifted, but using the hamstrings to pull into the bumpers. Good. Lengthen all the way back out, opening up the front body completely, opening up the back of the knee, and then dragging itself, your carriage back in with those hamstrings to kiss the bumper. Find the pause at that end because that's really going to challenge the hamstring. Good. Lengthen back out. And then drawing it all the way back in, finding that deep engagement with the hamstring. Good. Four more just like this. Whoo. Drag it in. Find that full bumper, that press against the bumper. Good. Last two. Good. And let's go one more. Okay, now we're going to hold it in against the bumper. Hold it right here. Good. Now my inner thighs are going to tap my knees. A little butterfly in, pulse in, in. It's a little tap. Inner thighs and kneecaps tap. Good. Keeping the carriage home with the hamstrings. So they should be on. Mine are on fire. Whew. Good, you guys. You got six, five, four, three. Last two. Hold your knees together. Let's pulse up, up with the hips, little pulse. Oh my goodness, the hamstrings, right? Holy cow. This is why I don't bridge a lot. <laughs> I'm feeling it right away. Good. We got six. Good. Last five. Oh boy. Four, three. We're not done. Last two. Woo! And set your hips all the way down. Now, we're going to take in this into a narrow stance. So both feet together. Okay, both feet together, knees together, legs are closed. From here, okay, for this one, you might want to bring your arms down because we are going to march the legs. Okay, so I'm going to bring my arms to my carriage for this one. We're going to lift those hips up and hold, keeping the carriage in with the hamstrings. Okay, and from here, we're going to start with a butterfly, but it's going to be out this time. So my inner thighs open and close. Open close, open, close. Good. Don't let the carriage slide out. I know it's so tempting to relieve the hamstrings and lengthen them here, but this time under tension, oh, you will feel them tomorrow. <laughs> Good. You guys, little butterfly last four. Whoo. We got three. Hang on. Last two. All right. Right here. Keep those legs together. We're going to march the right leg up. Keep it bent. Set it down. Whoo. Keep the carriage home lift and lower. So we're alternating a march with those legs. I want you to feel as that bent knee comes over the hip, that femur bone kind of sinks down into the pelvis. I can feel that in my body. Woo, and I'm trying to think about that rather than my hamstrings. Good, you guys. Keep that leg bent. Let's go for two more marches, and then we're going to add a leg extension. Okay, so right here. The next time you have that bent leg lifted, you're going to extend it, bend it, and bring it down. Good. Left leg. Lift. Extend. Point the toe. That should feel good on the hamstring, actually. That lengthening back out right there. Woo, reach. Bend. And lower. Lift. Extend. Bend. And lower. Last two. Lift. Extend. Bend and lower. Oh my goodness, we have a hold coming up, guys. It's coming. Okay, and the next time you have that right leg, we're going to lift. We're going to extend and we're going to hold. And now we're going to pulse through the left glute. Little lift. Little pulse up. Good. Try to keep your carriage home. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Whoo, set the right leg in. Look, my carriage is creeping away from me. Left leg up, extend, hold. Pulse through the right side, through the heel, all the way up through the hamstring and glute. Right here, you've got it. Last six, keep the carriage home. Five, four, three, two, 
and bring it all the way back down. Oh my goodness. Hamstrings are done. <laughs> done, done, done. All right, come on up. We're going to do that strap work on the other side. All right, so just making sure we don't, I don't mess this up here. Yeah, okay, we're going to start with, oh no, I'm sorry. We're going to do tricep dips first. See, that's why I check my list all the time. Look how sweaty my carriage is. Holy cow. All right, you guys. So tricep dips on the box. We're going to start with legs bent, feet flat on the carriage. My hands are wrapping the edge of the box. All right, and you want to make sure those thumbs are close to the booty. All right, now my tailbone, okay? You want that also close to the box. So find a position where you've got room to move up and down, all right, but your tailbone is nice and close to the edge of the box. I'm lifted up out of my shoulders, okay? Chest is open, core is engaged. Now we're just gonna bend the elbows. Exhale, bend both elbows, tailbone slides down the box, and then we lift it up. Bend at the elbows and lift. Good, so I want you to try to keep those shoulders away from the ears. We're simply bending the elbows. We've got four. Whew. Last three. We've got three layers here, guys, so I'm going to make it more challenging. Last two. And last one. Hold. Let's lengthen out our legs. So you're going to extend both legs. Your feet can be up against those shoulder blocks if you want. My heels are down. All right, from here, same exact thing. We're going to bend and press it up. Woo, bend at the elbow and press it up. Oh, the triceps. Bend, keep that chest lifted. You've got four. Woo, last three. We got two. Oh, my goodness. Good, you guys. Last one. All right, last layer, guys. Last layer. Hold right here. Heels to the top of the shoulder blocks if you can, if you feel comfortable and you feel sturdy. Right here, only four times. We're going to bend and lift. Whew, last three. Bend and lift. Last two. Bend and lift. One more time. Bend and lift, guys. Last challenge. Bend those elbows halfway, hold for eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, whoo, and bring those feet down. Oh, I almost fell off the box. All right, you guys. Now we come to the floor. Yes, right. No, almost the donkey kick. We'll do the donkey kick first. All right. So the left strap facing the rear is going to come around your left thigh. Okay. Left thigh, so take a minute to get it there. I'm shaky. <laughs> my legs and my arms are already shaky. Okay, once you're there, you're going to find your very best four-point kneel. Now, remember, we're over towards the left side of the carriage now. So my hand, left hand, left knee, really close to the edge. I've got my wrists under my shoulders and my knees under my hips. Now, ignore that strap because it's going to rub on the forearm. Just ignore it. Flex your left foot, okay, lifting up out of the shoulder girdle. We're going to press that heel up and back, whoo, and then bring it under the hip. Press it up and back, bring it under the hip. Okay, so right away, I can feel my weight wanting to shift. Okay, so you want to really stabilize through center. Keep the hips level, keep the shoulders square to the carriage. Good, let's go for four. Good, last three. I've played with all kinds of positions with this, guys, but I really like both hands on the same level just so we can keep that core involved maximum. <laughs> maximum involvement. Good, now on the next one, guys, you keep that knee under the hip. We're going to go for that hydrant. So we're going to lift that lateral lift out to the side. And back here. It does not matter how high you go. What matters is how stable we can keep the pelvis. And that's the job of the core, to stabilize the pelvis. We don't want it to move. We want to see how much mobility we can get through the hip from that femur bone. Good, as we open up. Whoo! I feel both sides of the waistline. A lot. Good. Last four, you guys. We got it. Last three. Good. We got two. And last one. 
Okay, now on this one, we're going to come back to that donkey, or sorry, that hydrant, but right now we're going to lift, and we're going to circle that kneecap back and around, back under the hip. Lift for the hydrant, circle around and back. So I'm drawing a circle with my kneecap, okay, keeping the knee in that, or that leg in the bent position. And as I draw that circle with my kneecap, I'm trying to keep my pelvis as stable as possible. I don't know if I'm doing a good job, but I'm trying really hard. Good, you guys. Four more. Whoo. Last three. You got it. Hang on. Last two. Oh, boy. One more. Up and around. Good. Now, right here, we're going to go for that hydrant. Lift. Extend the leg through the heel. Bend and lower. Whoo. Lift. Extend. Bend and lower. So adding that challenge onto that core. Lots more stability needed for this one. You've got four. Whew. Good. Last three. We're coming up on that last layer. Opening up the back of that knee every time you go for that extension. Good, you guys. Last one right here. Whew. All right. Now on your next one. Whew. We're going to bring it up. We're going to extend, and now we're just going to bend and extend. We're not going to lower that leg anymore. Whoo, we got this. We got six. Last five. Whoo, you got four. Last three. You've got two. Hang on. Last one. And bend it in and bring it down. Oh boy, the sweat's just dripping onto the reformer today. All right, step off to the left side of your machine and bring that strap around your calf. Okay, so below the knee is where we want it. Take a minute to pull yourself together. <laughs> At least that's what I need to do. Okay, from here, that left foot's going to stay where it's at. So find a place where you've got tension and you're holding that carriage out away from the bumper. Hands to the hips if you feel comfortable there or they can be in prayer, okay? My right leg is gonna step back, left foot grounded. Step back for that, woo, that split squat. Left knee tracks with my big toe and my second toe, and it stays in front of my ankle, but behind my toes. And then we come back up. Woo, now we're gonna add that arabesque, because I forgot right there, we're gonna lift for that arabesque. Okay, and then we're gonna come back to the flit, uh, split squat. Lift. Little lift of the back leg, but the low back stays flat. And then we find that split squat. Now, on the arabesque, you notice the tilt forward, rolling the pelvis over the femur. When you come back for the split squat, chest is tall, sternum over pubic bone. Good. Core is engaged. We lift. Whew. And then we come down. Now, the whole time, really aiming for that left heel to stay heavier than my toes. That's not so easy in the arabesque. Okay, so you really just want to watch the weight shift there. So we keep the back line of that left leg involved. Good. Pelvis stays level. The hip bones stay together. Good, you guys. Whoo, giving yourself a chance to settle into this one. Okay, because we've got those holds. They're coming up. All right, after this one, we got four more right here. Four. Whew. Last three. Trying to stabilize on that one. Good. Last two. Good. And last one right here. Now we're coming into that split squat and we're going to hold it. Hold it right here. Little pulse. This is where you really can manage the weight of that front foot. Left heel is very heavy. We feel the left glute. Inner thighs are like tweezers. That left knee tracking with big toe, second toe keeps those inner thighs closer towards the midline. So I want you to feel that in the body. You're here for six. Whoo, last five. Good, you've got four. Last three. And two. Whoo, on your next one, you're going to come up to that little arabesque and you're going to hold it right there. Good. Whoo, that left glute is on, right? Right leg lifts. Little pulse. Keep the low back flat. Keep the shoulders square to the floor. Good. Core is engaged and tight. We've got those hips level. You're here for six. 
five, whoop, losing my balance, four, three. There is a, quite a challenge with that strap, pulling on that leg. Last one. And bring it all the way down. Whew, okay, take off that strap. All right, we're going to be moving the box now. All right, so you're going to take that box off of the front. We're going to bring it all the way to the rear. Okay, so mine just fits. So I'm going to slide it in right here, all the way at the rear of the machine. So you want it up against the back of the reformer, okay, on the outside, not in the well. And you're going to grab your light weights that are back there waiting for you. If you don't want to use weights today, you don't have to. Now, before you get on that box, you're going to take off that one blue spring. So remember how I said we were on one blue the whole time? Other than when we don't have the springs at all, <laughs> which is right now. So I'm going to actually take my straps off of my carriage for this. Okay, so they're not in the way. All right, and I'm going to come up to my box. Now, my box is a little wobbly, so hopefully that won't mess me up. All right, your right foot is going to stay on the box. All right, and you're going to reach back with your left foot to find the headrest. Okay, once you're there, you're going to find that lunge position. So right foot is flat, left toes are on the headrest. That carriage is going to move really easily, so this is going to be quite a balance challenge. Arms are going to be long by your side with those weights, palms facing in. Now from here, we're going to come into a lunge. So I'm going to reach my right hip back. Arms are going to lift behind me and I'm going to hold that lunge. Right kneecap tracks with big toe, second toe. My back heel is lifted. Now from here, I'm going to bend my elbows and bend my left knee. Little carriage pull and tricep kick back. Okay, extend it back and come out of my lunge. Okay, so I'm finding my lunge, reaching those mat matchstick arms up and back, nice and straight, engaging the tricep. Bend at the elbows, bend the left knee, pull the carriage in. Extend the left leg, extend the elbows, and pull up out of your lunge. Okay, so little flow right here. Bending right knee, kneecap lines up with big toe, second toe. Bend, find that carriage pull. Good, open up the elbows. Lift up out of that lunge. We got four more just like that. Lunge, allow the torso to tilt. Arms come up and back. Woo, bend. Good, keep that hip, that left hip up there with that right hip. Last three right here. That right heel is heavier than the toes. Woo, but the toes are down. I'm getting quite shaky. And I'm awfully close to these shutters. <laughs> Good, you guys, last two. I can see all the flowers in the front yard. Good, right here. Bend, pull the carriage in, extend, lighting up those triceps again. Whoo, one more just like that. Lengthen it back. Full sequence right here. Bend, pull it in. Good, open up, kick it back. Lift up. Now we're going to hold. We're going to come down to that carriage pull. So we're going to find the lunge first. Hold it right there. Bend the elbows, drag the carriage in. Now hold it right there. Just the arms, just the arms. Elbows are lifted. We're just going for that tricep kickback. Whoo, that's it. Lots of stability needed through that lower half of your body. Good, we're here for six. Good, last five. Good, you've got four. Oh boy, last three, last two. Don't go anywhere, guys. On the next one, you're gonna hold the arms long Extend the left leg long, and now pulse those straight arms up. Up, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and bring it all the way in. Woo! I got really shaky on that right side. All right, you guys, set your weights down on the floor for just a moment, okay? We're gonna come into a plank. So hands are gonna be on the box for this one. So this is, this is truly your last plank today. All right, toes are gonna go on your headrest, hands on the box. Okay, so spread those fingertips out nice and wide. Find your headrest, lengthen out those legs, and find your very best plank. So I've got my legs in a closed parallel position. From here, lifting, spiraling those biceps forward, getting into the back body, okay? Belly button pulled up and in. On your exhale, you're going to pike that tailbone 
up and back, bringing the carriage in. Inhale, lengthen it out. Woo. Exhale, pike those hips up and back. Reach with the sits bones, reach with the tailbone. Good, I'm letting my head come in between my biceps. Woo. And lengthening back out. We've got six right here. Reach. And lengthen. Good, last five. So close. You've got four more. Again, if you need to reset right here or you just need to hold that plank for a minute, you do that. Last three. Woo. Two more. Nice and strong. And very last one. Best one of the day. Right here. And lengthen it all the way out. Woo. And step those feet down. Oh my gosh, <laughs> today is a sweaty one, right? Or is it just me? Maybe it's the weather. <laughs> All right, we're going to bring that carriage back. We got that lunge on the other side, guys. Lunge on the other side, okay? I look like a hot mess at the moment. <laughs> All right, left foot on the box. Right foot to the headrest. Find your positioning, okay? Whew, we're super tired now. I'm not even going to look at you because I'm going to fall off, so... <laughs> I'm just going to try to stabilize myself right here. Whew, breathe, okay, and find the connection points in my body that I need right now. So that left heel is super heavy, but my toes are connected to the box. I'm standing up on my left leg. My right foot is light. My right heel is lifted. Arms are long by my side. I'm going to find that lunge, bending the left knee. Arms lift up and back. Okay, hold. Bend the elbows, drag the right knee under the hip, extend, and pull it up. Good. We're going to find that lunge nice and smooth. Arms lift up and back. Pull. Bend it in. Pull that carriage. Extend and lift. Okay. Keeping my weight in the box, not trying to place weight into the headrest. Okay. Because then if I try to place weight into that very unstable carriage, I'm going to fall. I'm going to lose my balance. Good. So we need to find stability in that left leg. Good. Let's go for four more just like that. Match stick arms up and back. Good. Bending that right knee under the hip, pulling that right hip up, not letting it droop. And in last three. Bend. Extend. Good. That core is engaged. Helps everything right here. Arms and legs. Last two. Good. You hear me breathing heavy into the microphone, right? Good. Last full one right here. All right. Now on your next one, we're going to find those holds. So you're going to find that beautiful lunge first. Match stick arms up and back. Now we're going to bend, pull the carriage in, hold. Now my arms, just the tricep kickback. That's it. My weight is in the box. Try to get the weight out of the carriage in the box. Put it right there and get that left heel heavier than the toes. Good. And can you keep your shoulders out of your ears? Find a little pause at the end range of that tricep kickback. You've got six. Whoo, last five. You've got four. Last three. Oh boy, last two. Last one. Hold it, guys. Hold it. Extend the right leg. Pulse those arms up, up, up. Little matchstick pulse. Eight, seven, six, five. Four, three, two, and pull it all the way in. Whew, that side was stronger, I think, because I reset. <laughs> all right, you guys, come on down. Leave the box where it is. Leave your weights back there, too. You don't need them anymore. Let's bring that carriage all the way back, and let's hook up that one blue spring again. Now, I'm going to be facing away from you for this part. So... Just keep an eye, or I'll talk you through it, but just listen to my form. Okay, now both uh, loops come back onto your little uh, handlebars there, and we're going to lie down on our left side. Now, this one's a little different. You're going to lie all the way down on your side, 
and your left hand is, which is your bottom arm, is going to hug your right waistline. So my left arm is giving my waist a hug. I'm going to choke up. My knees are bent. Okay. They're bent in front of me. Like I'm sitting in a chair. My right arm is choked up on that strap. Now from here, I'm going to try to kind of rest. You can put up your headrest if you want, but I'm going to relax the, the neck. Okay. And from here, I'm going to drag that strap towards the foot bar and I'm going to find a little curl through my right waist as I extend that arm. And then I'm going to come all the way back, lengthen out that arm all the way overhead, biceps in front of the ear. I'm going to pull that elbow down, lengthen, extend the arm towards the foot bar and find a little curl in my right waistline. And then I'm lengthening it all the way back out. You notice my bottom waistline is lifted off the carriage in that full length. Good. Then I come up and I really kind of squeeze through that right waist and then I lengthen back out. Whoo. Good. Right here. Lengthen, engage, reach, extend through that elbow. Four more guys, four more, just like that. There are no layers here. Good. Right here. Good. Oh boy. Last three. Good. Lengthen out that waistline. Last two. Ooh, those triceps. Oh boy. And your last one right here. And bring it all the way down. Whew. Okay, come on up. Stay on your left side, though. That right loop, okay, is going to come around whew, your right thigh again. So you want to get it up there, <laughs> up around that right thigh. Okay, we're going to come into some clamming. So keep the chest open. If you'd like to grab a weight for your right hand here, you can. I'm going to do it without weight today, but I'm going to keep that arm moving. Okay, so the arm's already got quite a bit of work. Left elbow underneath your left shoulder. My legs are in a closed clamming position. Okay, I've got my chest open, my shoulders square. Lots of length out of both sides of the waistline, core is engaged. Okay, right here. My right arm's going to come up towards the ceiling. Okay, and I'm going to bend that elbow. So my hand is behind my ear. From here, I'm going to keep the inner line of the foot together. I'm going to Open the leg, open the arm, and close. Good. Open the leg, open the arm, and close. So like I said, if you'd like to have a weight here, you can have a weight. You don't have to have a weight. I'm opting out of that today. So those arms are already quite, they were sore when I started. <laughs> They're still sore. They're just getting more sore. Good. Let's go for four. We got some layers here. Good. Last three. Good. You've got two. Good. Keeping that pelvis quiet. So you'll find a shake right here for sure. All that stability that's needed. Last one. All right. Now we're going to lay or start layering on. So right here, we're going to open. We're going to extend and reach for the ankle, bend it back whew, and bring it in. My arm doesn't know what to do. Reach for the ankle, extend. Good. Bring it back and bend. Don't worry so much about the arm. I find that throws me off sometimes. Whoo, and close. Open, extend, reach for the ankle. Don't change your torso, okay? That stays nice and stable. We've got four. Good, we're gonna change the position of the hips in a minute. Last three. Whoo. Good, you've got two. And last one. All right, now right here, we are gonna go for that extension and that reach. So you're gonna reach right here, but now we're gonna roll the hips back and you're gonna reach for your toes. And then you're gonna come back to that side position. So we're gonna reach the right hip back, okay, and reach for the toes. And then we're gonna come back to stacking the pelvis. Okay, so the job here is to unlevel and level the hips. Good, last four, reaching for the toes. Good, and bringing it back. Last three. Good, last two. Getting that swivel through that left shoulder. Last one as well. 
and bend it all the way back in. Whew. All right, take off that strap. Ooh. Hang it up. What's in? What's next? I almost forgot for a second. I did forget for a second. Aha, I remember now. Okay, on your knees. We're going to be rear facing. Okay, so we're going to be in a high kneeling position for this. Okay, and I know you're on a blue, so just take it easy. If you need to change your springs to one yellow, you are absolutely welcome to do that. You're going to choke up on your straps. Okay, so I've got my hands right before those little metal D-rings. From here, I'm going to stay nice and tall. Roll those shoulders down and back. Keep the sternum over the pubic bone. Core is engaged, okay? Now, my knees are right underneath my hips, four inches apart, parallel. I'm going to open my arms out into an airplane position, okay? Lengthening through the wrists, okay? And then I'm going to bring it all the way back to center. Pull the straps towards my chest, and I'm going to go for a thigh stretch. Reaching the chest back, keeping that long length down the front of the body. Coming all the way back up. Good. Opening those arms out through center. Opening the arms out to the side for that airplane reach. Good. Coming back. Good. Pulling those straps into the chest. Good. And then holding them there as we go for that thigh stretch. Reaching back. Thinking of a dowel going right through that spine so we stay connected all the way from the crown of the head out those kneecaps. Pulling it back up. Lengthening, oh, lengthening out those arms. Balance is going to be challenging here. And then opening it out to the side, especially on that one blue. Good. Coming back through center. Pull the straps into the chest. Hold. Lengthen out. Lengthen through the front of the body. Ooh, once you feel that shaky point, you're going to come all the way back up. Lengthen out those arms and go for that lateral reach or that extension out to the side. Back to center. Let's go for two more. Bringing it into the chest. We've got that thigh stretch right here. Woo. Good. Coming all the way back up. All right. These are your last two. Big airplane opening, lengthening through the collarbone, out the wrist. Pulling the straps in towards the chest and lengthening out for that thigh stretch. Pulling it back up. This is your last one. Lengthen those arms. Whew. Open them up. Lots of length. Not crunching the shoulder blades at all. Keeping lots of space between them. Bringing this back in. And lengthening all the way through the front of the body. Shoulders are down. Ribs are closed. Good. And bringing those straps all the way down. All right. Let's do that sequence on the other side. Okay, starting with that clam. So coming down onto that right uh, forearm, that left strap or that strap in front of you is going to come around your left thigh. Okay, so get it up around that thigh. Right forearm is down just in front of the shoulder blocks for me, but find a comfortable position for you. Just make sure that elbow is under your shoulder. Okay, right from here, knees are going to stay bent. I'm going to stack that pelvis. Okay, arm is going to come up, and then we're going to bend the hand behind the ear. Now the inner line of the foot is going to stay together, and I'm going to open the top leg and open the arm. And close. Good. And my job here is to not let the pelvis roll. Okay, we're keeping it nice and stacked. We open, we let the pelvis shift at the end of this sequence, right? And then we use the core to bring the pelvis back to a stacked position. Good. Open and close. I'm not worried about height. Okay, you're worried about stability through the pelvis. That core engagement is what we're focusing on. Staying lifted out of that right shoulder. Whew. Getting a sincere shake on this one. I think this everything is just tired. We're here for four. Good. Last three. Good. You've got two. Good, last one. We're going to start with that extension. Here it goes. First layer. We're going to open it up. We're going to extend, reach for the ankle, and then bring it back and close. Open, extend, reach for the ankle. I'm not changing my pelvis here. That's not yet. That's the last layer that we do that on. So I'm extending that leg in that external rotation. Kind of like we did on that donkey kick, 
Okay, now we're just in a sideline position rather in a four, than in a four-point kneel, but I've still externally rotated the leg and I'm extending out of that position. Let's go for four. Good. Ooh, last three. Good, we've got two. Ooh. And last one right here. We're gonna hold it out there because now we're gonna roll back through the top hip, reach for the toes, and then bring it all the way back to a stacked position. I'm gonna roll the top hip back, reach for my toes, and then I'm gonna stack the pelvis again. Okay, so I'm rolling, rolling that top hip back. Okay, it's not something I do a lot um, in Pilates, but I kind of liked this move when I was working it out in my own body because I liked the restacking of the pelvis right here. Good, roll that top hip back and then restack the pelvis. Let's go for four. Reach for your toes. Last three. Lots of length. Good, last two. Lengthen out of that top hip. Good, and last one. Whew. And bring it all the way in. All right, right here, we're gonna go for that little tight curl, all right, on that left waistline. So you're gonna be choked up on that left, or on that strap in front of you again with that left hand. Okay, you're gonna lay down, and hopefully you can hear me because I know my mic gets weird when I lay down. Your right arm is going to wrap your left waist. Okay, my knees are still bent just like I'm curled up on the couch. My left leg, or my, sorry, my left arm is going to reach up and overhead, okay? And I've got that bicep always in front of my ear. All right, from here, I'm going to try to kind of relax my neck as much as I can. You can take a look at the floor if you want. And then we're going to lengthen and pull that strap, lengthen it out towards the foot bar, and you're finding a really tight curl through that left waistline and then lengthen and extend all the way back down. Good, we're gonna reach and curl, tight curl. Fully extend that top arm, because that's gonna help really get deeper into that curl. And then lengthen it back out. Good, reach, curl, tight, tight curl here. Good, and lengthen back out. And you know what, you notice too, I wasn't really fixing my waistline. So when you come down, make sure that bottom waistline lifts up off the carriage. And I had to kind of check myself right there. Good, and then re-lengthen on both sides of the waistline. Good, pull that strap tight, tight curl, lengthen it out, and then re-lengthen both sides of the waist. Good, we've got four. Whew. Last three, strengthening those neck muscles as well in this one, right? Good, last two. Good, you guys, it's not bad when you feel tension or stress. It's just you don't want to be there too long. That's all. And lengthen it back out. Whoo, and bring it all the way down. Whoo, guys, hang up that strap. Come out of that position because that's got to be not feeling good right now. All right, and we're going to do our final exercise. So onto your hands and knees. We're going to stay on that one blue, okay? We're going to bring our knees up against the shoulder blocks, and we're going to get a little spinal flexion in there right now. Okay, so my hands are going to walk out there on the rails of the machine. I've got my knees under my hips. They're going to stay there. Okay, and I've got my wrists at about six inches in front of my shoulders. Okay, now from here, we're going to start with a rounding of the spine. You're not going to pull that carriage, not yet. So on your exhale... You're going to nod the chin and round the spine and curl the tailbone, and you're going to hold. And then from there, you're going to draw the carriage in towards the heel of the hand. Extend it all the way back out and come to a flat back. Start with the rounding. Exhale, round and curl, hold. Drag the carriage in towards the palm. Hold that for a beat. And then you're going to extend it all the way back out to a flat back. Whew. Exhale, round and curl. Good, draw that tailbone under the body. Drag the carriage in, hold. Good, send it all the way back out to a flat back. Good, these are intense, guys, but I like to move nice and slow through them. It's hard for me to talk through them too because I really like to find that deep spinal flexion in my own body. Let's go for four more right here, okay? So 
Every time, resetting through the shoulders, lengthening through the collarbone. Exhale. Pull. Good. Inhale, lengthen it back out. Last three. <laughs> we got two. Good. Reset every time. And lengthen back out on that. Inhale. This is your very last one. Shoulders are down and back. Exhale. Round and curl. Hold. Drag that carriage in with your right and left waistline. Hold it there for four, for three, for two. And lengthen it all the way back out. Woo, sit those hips back. Take a nice child's pose. You, you earned it. Whoo, boy. And just take two big rests right here in that child's pose. You can take those knees a little wider than the shoulder blocks. Good. And just kind of open up that inside, in, that inner thigh as well. Two big breaths right here. Inhale. We're going to expand the ribs towards the sides of the room. Exhale. All that air out. Good. One more big inhale. Exhale. All that air out. Good. All right. Once you're ready, come scoot yourself back. Okay. You're going to be in a four point position. We're going to just do a little stretch sequence right here. So in a four point position on that carriage, you're going to take your right arm and we're going to lace it through the window on the left. We're going to do a little thread the needle with those arms and you're going to kind of lay that right shoulder onto the carriage. Hold that right there. You should feel a nice stretch through the back of the arm, through the back body, little spinal twist for four. Last three, good, two, bring it all the way back up. Let's go to the other side, left arm, palm up, laces through the window on the right, laying that shoulder down on the carriage, finding that stretch right there, holding and breathing. Good, last four, three, last two. Oof, pulling all the way back up through center. Let's get those hamstrings a little bit, right? Okay, we're going to bring that heel out onto the uh, headrest in front of you. My hands are on my shoulder blocks. Okay, my left knee is under my hip, and I'm going to hinge down. Okay, so I'm going to get deeper into that hinge with a flat back, bringing my chest towards my knee. Okay, and once you're there, you can go ahead and let yourself kind of round down over that leg and really stretching out that hamstring. Now, the more that you can flex that foot, the deeper you're going to get into that hamstring, really lengthening it out. So flex that foot nice and deep. Hold and breathe here for four. That breath is going to release that tension. Last three. Last two. Good, bringing that all the way back up. Let's switch those legs out. Good, left heel comes forward. We're going to hinge first. You're already hinged, right? We're already leaning over, but we're going to hinge deeper, leading with the chest towards the knee. Foot is flexed. And then once I get to my end range of motion, I'm just going to let my head kind of round down over towards that knee, holding that right there, breathing here, just breathe. Flexing the foot a little deeper, last four. Good, last three and two. Good, coming all the way back up and let's really quickly take a pigeon stretch. So the right leg is gonna come forward. Whew, left leg is gonna reach back over that platform. My right inner thigh is shining up. My hands are gonna come down on the rails. Okay, and if, you, if you're fine and you're getting enough stretch with the chest lifted, stay there. If you wanna bring that chest a little closer to the headrest, that's fine too, getting a really nice stretch through my right inner thigh, opening up the front of my left hip. Good, and getting into that right glute as well. Hold it here for four. Last three. Good, last two. Good, bringing that back up nice and slow. We're gonna switch out those legs, so coming back to the knees. Left foot comes forward, or left leg comes forward, and reach that right leg back out over the headrest, opening up the front of the hip, left inner thigh shines up, and then I'm going to walk my hands out on those rails, getting a nice stretch through that left side, right front of the right hip opens up, so lengthening out through that psoas, holding it right here, Whew. and breathing for four, last three, 
last two. Good, walking those hands all the way back. Woo, coming onto those knees. Guys, and you did it. <laughs> nice job. Well done. That was a sweaty one. At least for me, it wasn't. It was quite shaky, but I tried to not make it look too shaky when we were at the back. That got a little tough, right? I know at that point we were getting pretty tired. So again, as always, guys, if you have questions for me, don't be afraid to leave comments below the video. I will always answer you. It may take me a couple days, but I will get back to you. I promise. You can find me on social media too at Jess P. Fit on both Instagram and Facebook. Um, what else? One thing I wanted to tell you guys is that now every Friday at 4.30 p.m., that's Pacific Standard Time, so PST, I am now hosting a live Zoom reformer workout. So if you're interested, these live Zoom reformer workouts are not, uh, not workouts that I will be posting on YouTube. So these are separate and different. If you're interested in a more personal one-on-one -on -one experience, contact me, okay? My, all my contact information is right there on the YouTube page. Contact me or go to justpfit.com and my contact information is there. Um, and let me know if you want information about those live reformer classes. Every Friday, 4.30 p.m. on Zoom, okay? You can have your camera on or off. It's your choice, it's your class. So I'm there for you. I do the workout with you, okay? But it's very personal. So I can talk to you before. I get on 10 minutes before class starts. We have a chance to chat, talk about injuries, surgeries, questions, thoughts, anything at all, okay? And then I stay on afterwards also to kind of help target those same, those same questions. So um, it's a great way if you want to get a little deeper into your practice or start advancing a little bit more or you just want to... Um, nurse back through an injury and you need that more personal connection, let me know. All right. I am, I'm always excited to hear from you. We just started those workouts this month, June, um, and it's been lots of fun. So let me know. I'm here for you guys and I will see you next time. Make sure you like this video and subscribe. I always forget to say that too. All right, you guys, see you next time.